9.2% of people actually hit their goals. And the main reason that most people are successful, those 9.2, is they knew they had. Have you ever set a goal before only to fail and not achieve it? My name is Joe Moffat with Master Life by Design, and I am here today to teach you how to set goals, specifically SMART goals, so that you can succeed at any goal without failing. Now, when I work with clients all over the world, one of the staple pieces is this simple foundation of SMART goals. Well, now, we've all set goals before and what we want to achieve, but sometimes what we found is that you may not have been able to achieve your goal because you were just too general. And so today, I wanna to go over SMART goals and what that means and how you can create SMART goals so that you can achieve any goal that you want. First, the S stands for specific. You gotta be specific in what you want. I will tell you, it would shock you how many people, they're just not specific in what they want, right? They sit there and they say, oh, I wanna make more money. Well, that's great, but how much more money? Because after you watch this video, you might go out to your car and find a quarter on the ground and all of a sudden, you just got your goal of making more money and you're like, no, 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 no. I wanna make $25,000 more. You gotta be specific. The S also stands for simple. I can't tell you how many times I set goals with clients and they try to make this big, long, complex goal. And that's what complexity is the enemy of execution. So keep your goal simple. Keep it really simple, one sentence. Next, the M is measurable. We have to be able to measure the goal. So many times clients come and they say, you know what, I wanna be able to uh, have more passion and love in my relationship or my marriage. And all of a sudden I'm like, that's awesome, but how will you know when you achieved it? Right? Does that mean you gotta go out on a certain amount of date nights? Does that mean that you guys spend a certain time together or you go a certain amount of places? How can we measure it? And sometimes I like to use a subjective scale from zero to 10. Where are you now? You might be a level five. And where do you wanna be? Maybe you wanna be a level eight. What does a level eight look like? And it's important that you're able to measure what a level eight is. What's the criteria for you when you achieve that, okay? The M also means it's gotta be meaningful for you. How many times have you set a goal for someone else or for your friends or your parents or your, your spouse or kids, but not for you? See, when the goal is getting challenging, as we go and get into the weeds of the goal, all of a sudden it becomes difficult. And if it doesn't mean anything to you, guess what? You're gonna quit. You're gonna end, you're gonna fail, you're gonna give up, whatever it is. So it's gotta be meaningful for you and not anyone else, okay? The A stands for obtainable or achievable, right? You gotta be able to achieve your goal, right? I have clients that come and they're like, oh, I wanna be able to lose 300 pounds this quarter. And I ask them, is that really achievable? And they're like, no. And I'm like, yeah, it is. You cut up a couple arms and cut off a couple legs and boom, you hit your goal. But that doesn't really work for you, right? But it's gotta be achievable. So when you look at your time frame, you gotta say, okay, in this next quarter, over the next three months, by the end of, if you're starting January 1st and you wanna end March 31st, where do you wanna be, right? You wanna release 15 pounds? Great, that's achievable, that's obtainable. Many people, they fail because they don't know if their goal's achievable or not. And the greatest way to do it and learn and know whether it's achievable or not is, Who's done it before? Has there been someone in your network, someone on social media, someone in your family or friend network that actually has achieved your goal before? Because if they've done it, you can probably do it too. Okay, so that's the A. The R is realistic and or relevant, right? Like you can't go back and say, I wanna buy property on the moon this year. I don't know too many real estate agents selling property on the moon, but if there is, let me know, I'll get a early cut. However, there's clients that come and in the beginning, they're, they're overweight, their they're marriage on the rocks, they're about to get divorced, they're broke, their whole life is on fire, right? It's melting down. And I ask them, what do you want to achieve? And the first thing they say is, I want to shoot a low 70 in my golf game. Like, how is that relevant? Your life's miserable and you wanna go master a hobby? Like, come on, we gotta get realistic here. So make sure your goal is realistic and it's relevant, okay? Especially to what you're working towards or what you're working on, okay? With that, the T is a time, time stamp or time bound. 
by when do you want to achieve this goal? Okay, you got to be clear on when. Otherwise, it's not a goal, it's just a a hobby, a practice, it'll just go on and on and on, right? We want to make sure that you have a time frame because it's like, have you ever gone, maybe you did this in high school or maybe in college where you had a paper to write and all of a sudden you procrastinated to the last minute and you had this time frame of tomorrow morning when it was due or at midnight it was due and you're like, I got to get moving. So a time frame, a time stamp allows us to have a specific time that we want to achieve this goal by. And it kind of put, it's a good thing, right? It kind of puts the pressure on us to make sure that we achieve this goal. So when we talk about SMART goals, what is an example of a SMART goal? Because otherwise I've seen people where they write out the S, the M, the A, the R, and the T, and that's great. But again, I like to keep it simple, right? We don't want to make this complex. So a simple SMART goal is to release 15 pounds by December 31st, right? Let's just say we're in September right now when you're watching, which we're not, we're in December, but you want to make sure that you are clear by when at the end of it. So to release 15 pounds by December 31st. Awesome, put the date too so you guys know because otherwise, it, does that mean December 31st this year, next year, five years from now, 15 years from now? You gotta be specific, right? So that's an example of a SMART goal. Now, I will tell you, so many people, they don't do this. This is the challenge, is they don't do this. And so they say, I wanna make more money this quarter, and then all of a sudden they work and they don't even know because they don't have a way of measuring it. And so you want to make sure that you have a smart goal and it's the foundation of goal setting. It's a foundation of achievement, right? Because if you're unclear, I like to tell all my clients, if I said, Hey, let's go to Texas and you're in California, would you just jump on the plane and fly to Texas? Probably not because you don't even know where we're meeting. Houston, Austin, where? And if I told you let's meet in Austin, where is that? Is it in some hotel? Is it on the corner downtown somewhere? Like where specifically? So if you want to be able to succeed this year in any goal that you set, you must make sure it's in a smart format, okay? With that, there's two types of goals. I wasn't going to do this, but I'm going to throw it in there anyway, because I really believe that when you actually talk about goals, it's important to talk about what goal. And there's, there's a ton of different ways to do goals, right? Smart goals is a format, but which kind of goals are you setting? And so today I want to talk the difference about aim goals, kind of what you're aiming at, and end goals. What are you achieving by when? If you think of an aim, it's kind of like an arrow that you're shooting forward. An aim goal is something that will never end. It's something you're always working towards. Where an end goal is something that you're working towards that has an end date or end completion. Let me give you a quick example. An end goal example is to release 15 pounds by December 31st, right? Like that's easy, we, it comes to an end, we know when. However, an aim goal is something we're always gonna strive for and, you're pro and it's a little bit more vague, it's not a smart goal, but it's something you're always going to be aiming towards your entire life, you'll never achieve it, and if so, you're gonna continue to maintain it, right? So what, for an example, is this. If in the health and wellness, I might say an aim goal for my health is to be able to be have maximum flexibility and energy throughout the day, every day. For you to be able to have something that you're shooting towards, that's gonna to be the key. And it's gonna be something you're always working towards. For me, I have an aim goal of being 80% or more of the time present with my family. Right, like when I'm done work, uh, doing coaching calls or you know, making videos or whatnot, what I like to do is go down and be present with them. And so that's a goal that I'll never achieve. It's something I'll always be working towards, right? So with that, that's the difference between an aim goal and an end goal. And I would encourage you to go ahead and take a moment, look at what are all the different categories of your life, whether it's finances, relationship, health, friendships, whatever those are, spiritual contribution, go ahead and write down what's one aim goal for every category of your life. And when you start to work towards that and you get clear on that, all of a sudden each day you can wake up and you know what you're working towards. And it starts to make the path of success in that goal a lot easier. So many people, they don't do this. So I'm gonna encourage you to hit the pause button, go ahead and write that down now, and then come back and be able to finish up the next part.
All right. So hopefully you guys have written out your aim goal and your end goals and you know what you're working towards. Now the next part so that you don't fail in any goal setting is you have to know why you want to achieve what you want to achieve. And so with that, I always want to encourage you to write down, you can do it in bullet points, you can do it in a paragraph, it doesn't really matter, there's no right or wrong, but what you do want to do is you want to write down all the reasons why. Why is it important for you to achieve that SMART goal or that AIM goal? we got to have a purpose behind it. The reason being is because, look, there's the 80-20 rule in everything, right, in life, right? 20% of the time, things stink. 80% of the time, things are going great. It's those times where things stink that you gotta make sure that you have something pulling you through those challenging times. And we're gonna talk about challenging times towards the end here, but you gotta know why. It's gotta be able to pull you, right? For me, if I'm working on a goal, one of my purposes, especially like my fitness goal, is to be the example for my children then see that their dad is a beast, right? And so that just lights me up. Thinking about them watching me work out, that pushes me, especially when I get up at 425 in the morning and it's 20 degrees outside and I'm driving to the gym, I'm tired, it's cold, I don't, I'd rather be in my warm bed. Like that gets me up and moving, that gets me fired up. And so it pulls me. Most of the time what happens with people is they gotta go and they try and push themselves. Oh, I gotta go make these 300 phone calls today. And it's like, no, but they know why they're making those 300 calls. All of a sudden, bam, it's easy, right? They get up and they go. So here's a couple of questions I always like to ask clients that will really help you get clear on your why. And so do a basic brain dump right away, get it done. But then how will you feel when you achieve this goal? Really right out, how will you feel? The second one is what will it mean to you when you achieve this goal, right? Like what will that mean to you? And then the last one is who will you become in the process? Who will you become as a result of this goal? And when you answer those three questions, it starts to take it up a whole nother level. Now, what we wanna make sure is as you're writing this, you're using some compelling, juicy language. So many times people write, I just wanna travel the world. And that's cool, but to me, it's like a level three of excitement. So what I like to say is I wanna spoil my queen, my friends, and my family while traveling all over the world in the most luxurious transportation that man has ever created as we get to see all of God's beauty and only which 1% of eyes ever get to see. And for me, that's like a level 10 when I say that, when I read that, when I hear myself speak it, it's like, it turns me on. So you gotta find out and use language that compels you. Right? Instead of saying, you know, to go out and make memories with my family, maybe it's go out and make magical memories with your family. Quick side note, whenever I hear a word that's compelling or it speaks to me or it gives me this mental image that like kind of like excites me, I write it down. I have a piece of paper that I have in my folder and I just write it down so I can always go back and look at those that word candy so that I can be able to achieve that goal when I put it put the word in my purpose, okay? So it just lightens me up, it, it, it fires me up. So go ahead and write it down, quick cheat sheet right there for you. All right. Once you've nailed your purpose, right? And there's, you hear a lot of people say all the time, if you know what you want and why you want it, it doesn't matter how, you'll figure it out. And the example that I use with clients all the time is, if God forbid someone you love had to get surgery and it cost $15 million cash by in the next 24 hours or 48 hours, we'll say. Do you have 15 million just laying under your bed? The chances are most likely not. And so would you just say, sweetheart or loved one, hey, you know, it's, it's 15 million, I don't really have it. You know, we'll see on the other side. Good luck. Love you. No, you would do, you don't know what you would do, but you do everything and anything to achieve that goal. And so of getting the 15 million and why? Because you know you wanna save their life. You wanna spend more time with them. You love them, right? So that's what we wanna do first and foremost. We gotta know what we want, that SMART goal and why. Now, once you know what you want and why you want it, we're gonna to have to figure out what's the plan, right? What's the map to get us there? It's gonna change, it's not 100%, but what's the map? And this is where we do a mental brain dump. You just wanna get everything out on the table because you gotta be able to see. You wanna write it down and have it out in front of you. And one thing I always encourage is we wanna make sure that we don't think that we gotta have 
everything because doors will open. We wanna have as much as we can or as much as we think we can to achieve that goal. I always share with people, you wanna be more detailed on this than the guy down the street trying to rob a bank, right? Like that's how detailed you wanna be, right? So with that being said, write it all down, write everything you wanna do. And once you have everything you think you need to do, I always like to ask this question, I encourage you to write it down. And that is, if you achieved everything on this list, would it guarantee you the outcome of that result, that SMART goal? And if the answer is no, there may be some more things that you know you need to put in there. So if your goal is to release 15 pounds by December 31st and you're like, eat healthy, work out. There's probably a little bit more detail in that. There's probably a little bit more steps in there, right? Like sign up for the gym, get a workout program, hire a nutritionist, get your meal meal plan put together, meal prep, go food shopping, throw out the junk food. I mean, like there's a lot that you need to do. And once you have it all, then prioritize it, right? It's really simple. Just so you know, this is the first one. This is what I need to do first. The other ones don't matter at this moment. Let me go knock that out. Now that you have the foundation, I wanna go into some extra credit for you. This is what most people never do that's actually gonna help you have the most success. And that is you gotta get clear on what are the obstacles that are gonna come your way when it comes time to achieve this goal, right? I always believe that the enemy, whenever you're trying to go to that next level, there's a new devil. The enemy's trying to knock you down and he doesn't want you to succeed. And so with that being said, you gotta start to look at what are the obstacles? Because there's two reasons why. Number one, when you're on the path to that goal, and the obstacles presented, if you know it's there, you're not gonna get upset, right? Like think about it, if you're going on a vacation or on a road trip and you know there's construction or a detour, well, when you roll up to it and you hit it, you're not mad, you just expected it. And you know what you're going to do after. And that's the second point is you have a game plan on how to overcome that obstacle. So many times people wait for the obstacle to show up and they're like, oh, there is gonna be an obstacle? It's like on the path of success, is there ever not an obstacle? So if you think about anything in your life that you achieved, was there ever not an obstacle, right? There's always been one, there's always going to be. Even when I make these videos, there's obstacles along the way. So what I would encourage you to do is write out what are all the obstacles that might get in your way of achieving your SMART goal? And secondly, how can you overcome that? What are some of the things or ways that you can overcome that obstacle? When you do this, you won't be blindsided you will be prepared. And there's a big difference between being prepared and blindsided. And that's the difference of success or not, of succeeding or failing. And that is not gonna happen to you if you apply everything here today. All right, the last part of this video is that I wanna share a crazy stat with you. And that is Statistic Brain did a study in 2017 that said 9.2% of people actually hit their goals. And the main reason that most people are successful, those 9.2, is they knew they had to sacrifice in order to achieve their goal, right? There's, it's so funny when I see people, they wanna release 15 pounds, but they never wanna sacrifice. They don't wanna stop eating the way that they, they're eating. Or they don't wanna go to the gym. They don't wanna get their butt up early or go out to the gym later in the evening, whatever it needs to be. I love going out at like 5.30 in the morning on a cold day and going for a run. Or midday in the summer when it's 100 degrees and putting a flak jacket on because I know I'm gonna have to sacrifice something. And that's the, the pool time, the enjoyment, but I wanna challenge myself, but I know their sacrifice too. So the people who plan their sacrifices in advance actually have the best chance of having success. If you're one of those people, what you wanna do is, you wanna plan, what am I gonna to have to sacrifice? Does that mean you're not gonna eat Thanksgiving dinner with everyone and that you're gonna bring your own meal prep to the dinner table? Does that mean that you're not going to go out on a trip with friends or go out to the bar or happy hour or whatever you may do to spend loose money because you're paying off your debt or maybe you're building your portfolio? So what are you willing to sacrifice in order to achieve this SMART goal? When you're clear on all this, all of a sudden, you put the odds in your favor for having success and not failing. These are the cornerstones, the foundation for you to succeed at any goal without failing. 
So if I was you, one of the things that I'm gonna invite you to do is to go out there, go get clear, go spend some time alone. Maybe get up early when no one's around, no one's awake. Put some great music on and really get clear on what do I want to achieve? Put in a simple, smart format. Go ahead and identify why you want it. What do you need to do to achieve it? What are some of the obstacles that are gonna come your way? And what are you willing to sacrifice? Because you could be like the other 91% of people who fail or you could take the principles from this video and be the 9% that succeed. So you gotta decide what it is. All right guys, that's it. Hope you found this video valuable. It's literally the foundation that I do when I set goals, when I work with my clients all over the world to help them become part of that 9% have massive success in their life. If that's you, you're excited about uh, writing down your SMART goal, what I'm gonna ask that you do is tell me what's your biggest goal of the year? Comment below, write down in the box below, write what's your goal, and if you wanna do extra credit and tell me why, that would be awesome. More importantly, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, share it, most importantly, subscribe so you can get some really killer knowledge in your life so that you can learn how to master your life by design, take your life to the next level. So with that, appreciate you guys. Have a great one. Joe Moffitt with Master Life by Design. See you guys.